Hi there. Welcome to A New Way to Museum. My name is David Levering. I run the science camps at the Sternberg as well as our virtual museum on Gathertown. In this series of videos, we're going to be taking a tour of some parts of the virtual museum, and we will also be talking with some Sternberg Museum staff as well as some outside paleontologists about their work, some of the work that they do that involves the Sternberg Museum, and generally have a good time exploring uh, paleontology in this virtual world. So let's head over to the front desk and talk to our museum director, Dr. Reese Barrick. Hi there, Dr. Barrick, how are you doing today? Doing well, David, how are you doing? And doing pretty well. to everybody that's joining us from a new way to museum. Yeah, welcome to our audience who's gonna go on this little exploration of the Sternberg Museum online with us. Uh, Dr. Barrick, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Dr. Reese Barrick, and I'm the director of the Sternberg Museum of Natural History here in Hayes, Kansas. And uh, I have the fun opportunity of being a director of a natural history museum, which gets means I get to do a lot of different things. It's part of the reason I love it. I get to be involved with exhibits and choosing exhibits and, and uh, education and programs, interacting with the public which includes raising some money on occasion. Um, and it also uh, gets to be involved with research and collections, and uh, which is all very exciting. So it's all the different parts of a museum I get to be involved with, which is a lot of fun. So how does one find themselves becoming a museum director? So what, like, what was your training and what kind of sparked this interest in overseeing an entire institution? Well, that's a great question. Um, I really started out, uh, went to uh, college and thought it'd be cool to be a biologist. And so I studied biology and then I, I jumped into taking some geology classes and that really uh, spurred an interest in uh, not just natural history of things that are alive today, but things that were alive in the past and, and fossils and the uh, earth history. So. I merged those two and went looking for, went to graduate school and got a master's and a PhD. And I merged my two interests into paleontology and understanding the history of life. Um, I took that and went to uh, have a teaching job at a university. I worked at North Carolina State for 10 years. And while I was there, I had the chance to become an adjunct curator at the North Carolina oh, okay. State Museum of Science. And it was during a time when they were building a brand new museum and putting new exhibits in um, and getting to learn about all the programs and things they were doing. And it was really fascinating. And I started thinking, this is really a great way to be able to, to connect with a lot more people than just the ones that you might uh, have in a classroom. And there was an opportunity that came up to be uh, a director at uh, Natural History Museum in Price, Utah. So I jumped at the opportunity um, where it was mostly dinosaurs and also some archaeology and had a, a great experience there. But what was really neat was when the Sternberg Museum opportunity came open, it's at a four-year college. So it's actually mm -hmm. a, a university museum. So you get the best of both worlds, interacting with the public in, at large and teaching them and uh, interacting about the natural history of the earth, but also being able to interact with students and have students uh, uh, around the museum all the time. So it's really a fun, best of both worlds. So you were talking about uh, exhibits a little bit. What's something that goes into making a new exhibit, uh, whether it's one that's being made by the Sternberg or ones where you've had a traveling exhibit um, like the Sahara Sea Monsters that we're getting, that were the first in the country to be getting pretty soon, um, that maybe people don't um, understand or appreciate that you could you could share with folks? Well, <laughs> that, that's a, a, a great question. You know, one of the things is that when you're coming up with an exhibit, there's a couple of things that are always... Uh, uh, important. One is, what is the story you're trying to tell? And in that story, what's the information you're trying to get across? 
And in doing so, what do you actually have for objects? Because without actual objects, it's hard to really tell a story. You can come up with a great story, but if you don't have any visuals, if you don't have any objects or interactives that people can do, it's going to defeat the purpose. People aren't going to remember your story or be interested in, in coming to see it. So it's really uh, a balancing act between what objects do you have and what is the story you're trying to tell. And then another really real big key is how will people be able to interact with your objects or with your story and trying to put all those things together into something that is interesting, a topic that's interesting and objects that are interesting um, is what really creates uh, a good exhibit. And the thing is, it's not just that, it's how do you build it and put it together? Sure. So there's the basics, you might need carpentry or welding or all sorts of things and actually how you're going to put your objects and your story together, uh, graphic design um, for a lot of your uh, pictures or your um, uh, text, are you going to have electronics? Um, what sorts of things are, are you putting in it? And how large, what, how big a space are you going to fit this in? How are people supposed to interact with it? It's, a, it's a really a pretty big process. <laughs> and when it's, it's really uh, exciting when it's done well, but there's always times we have to stop and say, is this working? And you have to bring people in to see, you know, when you know what the stories you want to tell, sometimes you don't know if it's coming across well because you already know the story. Right. So you always have to bring in other people to make sure that they're getting out of the exhibit the things that you want them to get out of it. So the, the testing of your exhibit with, with uh, people is another big part of, of creating an exhibit. And you have to reach a lot of, of different audiences. Like you may have folks that are fairly advanced. You may have older, younger, all manner of people are going to come see that exhibit. And I imagine striking a balance between that giant variation in what your audience might be is, is fairly challenging too. It's really difficult because, you know, when people say, what's your audience? Well, it's preschoolers, it's elementary schoolers, it's <laughs> high schoolers, it's their parents. It's their grandparents. It's the, uh, uh, you know, the single 20 something, it's college students. It's basically the whole, whole uh, gamut of, of people that might have an interest in coming to your museum. So the other real key when, when uh, creating an exhibit is making something that is interesting and attractive for somebody that's just kind of walking by, chatting with their friend, and they can just look at the visuals and get something out of it. Mm -hmm. and maybe you have a talking point. Other people are going to want to learn about that topic in depth. So you have to have some writing that goes into depth and detail of what the exhibit's about for those people and that may have you know, a, a deeper interest or experience in your topics. And then you got to have some writing that's for sort of the uh, middle school or elementary school level so that you're reaching uh, kids that have a real interest but maybe aren't going to be interested in words that are at a college level right. for description, which is oftentimes, you know, researchers are researching at a graduate level, but you have to take take it back so that the story reaches the largest number of people, whether they're just looking at the visuals, reading in depth, or reading just a little bit to get them interested, more interested in the, the topic. So like museums function, natural history museums in this case are functioning as almost a translator between the research side and the, and the general public to get them on board with uh, research products? Very much so. And, and, you know, it's one of the things that uh, is big that as researchers, if you want to become a paleontologist, you need to know some biology, some geology, some chemistry, but you also need to know how to write and how to speak and communicate <laughs> with all different audiences. Because as a paleontologist, you're going to have to talk to preschoolers, uh, 11th graders, college students, and other professional, uh, and also other professionals at conferences. So you're going to have to be able to speak a lot of different languages and being able to translate everything back to an interest level that is basic for uh, anybody in, in different age groups is really important. And so sometimes it takes people that have 
that special translation ability that are not researchers to help turn these things into exhibits and educational programs. So what would you say to at least some of our members of our audience who are probably watching who might be curious about getting involved with their local natural history museum um, on on different levels, so different different areas of need. What would you uh, say to them to kind of give them some helpful hints? Well, you want to find a museum that has uh, some subject matter that are things that you're interested in, uh, whether it's a natural natural history museum or an art museum or a historical society. And most museums will have a contact us uh, page on their websites. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, most museums are really looking for people that are interested and maybe willing to put in some time to volunteer. Uh, and, and there's always different ways in museums and natural history museums. We've got a lot of different ways that we need help with taking care of animals, with working in collections, with helping out maybe in the gift store or front desk or learning more about the museum to become a docent and help uh, tour other people around. So there's a lot of different ways to get involved with your museum. And the main thing is find one that you're really interested in and in the contacts, find there may be a, a, a volunteer director, there may be somebody in the education department, but just give them an email, give them a call because museum people are really, it's always really excited to talk to the people that they're they're serving and working with. And for our, some of our uh, students that might be watching this who maybe want to be a museum director someday, is there any advice you can give them on like things they can start working on now to set themselves up for museum life in the future? Wow. Um, I think a lot of it is really working on your interpersonal relationship. You know. You're going to work, most museums want somebody to be a director that's also going to be sort of their scientific authority. If it's a natural history type museum or their sort of art authority if it's an art museum. And that's great, but then you have to be able to uh, work with people. You're going to end up having to hire people, maybe even fire people. So just the interpersonal relationships. Um, that you know, working with colleagues, working with your fellow students and communications as you're going through uh, your your undergraduate or graduate days. And then um, understanding a little bit about uh, how much things cost. Because <laughs> one of the things you will always have to deal with are budgets and how you're going to meet meet budgets. Um, and if you just sort of know how, how things cost, how much things cost, um, and what it's going to take, then your, your relationships will, you know, can't stress it enough. Communication <laughs> skills are going to be really important because you're going to be dealing with people that are overseeing you. There's going to be boards that you have to deal with, people that you may be looking to, uh, get them excited about the museum so that they will donate money to help keep your museum running, as well as working with your staff um, and trying to make sure that everybody, you know, museums are a great place to work. And you want to make them a great place to work. So if you want to be a museum director, you have to know how to work also with your staff so that they're always remain excited and bought into the museum to make it the best experience possible for visitors. Because if they're happy and excited, they're going to, do things and create products that are going to make the public excited and interested. And that's going to make a successful museum. All right, cool. Well, we're going to continue our walkthrough of the Snurber Museum online. It was great getting a chat with you. Um, do you have any last words of wisdom for, for our audience before we take off? Just um, find things that you're really passionate about and excited and try to experience as many things as possible whether it's being outside, getting out in the field, or jumping into a virtual experience and to wait places that you may not have the chance to go see or visit. And that's uh, you know, the more you do and the more you see, uh, the better person you'll be. Very good. All right. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day. All right. Have a great one.
Thanks for joining me for this new episode of A New Way to Museum. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for new episodes every week. If you'd like to visit our virtual museum yourself, you can do so via the link in the description below this video. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.